All right, so what we've got here is, is my famous Corvel, Corbel versus Schramsberg. I have poured them just now. We popped it and poured it. We didn't let you know which is which. We do know which is which, though, ourselves. So what we're going to do is you've got a mass-produced wine, uh, which is $9.99, very affordable. It's, it's a wine used in the United States for the most weddings, New Year's parties. It is used uh, constantly. That wine is called a uh, California Champagne. It's still made in the traditional method of how you make uh, champagne in the Champagne region in France. Um, however, they call theirs here a California Champagne and it's called Corbel. And uh, it's in a brute style. The other one is called Schramsberg. And Schramsberg is a Blanc de Blanc. So that is made with 100% Chardonnay grapes, whereas the Corbel is made with some mixed grapes in there. So you're going to have some different flavor. They're not exactly the same there because you're looking at a, an 100% Chardonnay uh, aged a lot longer than the Corbel. The Corbel's probably had about 12 months uh, on the lees, whereas Schramsberg has had, uh, I think, two, two to three years there. I believe that the Blanc de Blanc is, is two to three, uh, which is their their probably their lowest quality out of all of theirs, their most affordable and more budget-minded for them, which is a $25.99 bottle of um, sparkling wine, which is what they call it. They do not call their champagne. They call it the American term, which is sparkling wine. In America, you can use the term California champagne if your sparkling wine comes from California. Uh, you can use it. It has to have the appellation or the, the area on it. Uh, you cannot use just plain champagne when it's on the bottle. It's got to have where it came from. Uh, however, with sparkling wine, that's kind of the term we use in the United States for any sparkling wine here. Also, we use the term, I guess, or not we, but in Spain they use the term cava. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you're used to that. Spumante in Italy and Champagne is originally from France and Champagne. So to me, a true Champagne comes from France and it's made from three grapes, which is the uh, Pinot, Pinot Noir, the Chardonnay, and the Pinot, uh, oh gosh, I can't say it, Manure. Uh, and uh, somebody, will, somebody will write about that later and tell me how to say it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, whereas in the United States, uh, it can be made out of almost any grape. And in, in Cava, the Cava uh, champagnes, well, sparkling wines, the Cava ones from Spain are actually made with different grapes than what they make in Champagne in France. So I've spoken about that on all my wine blogs online. Um, however, I'm having my second Corbel versus Schramsberg tasting. So let's see how my girls do. Okay. okay. Right. Let's see it. Let's see if they pick the one that I like or if I pick the one that I like. So we'll see how that goes. All right. Um, don't swirl your glasses. Kind of take a look at it. Look at your colors. Look at your bubbles as well. One was poured and then the other. So, I mean, there's really not much difference right now in, in the bubbles that you've got in there. And more bubbles than me. More bubbles than me. Okay, so everybody knows that B's got more bubbles. Okay, so we're, you know, we're looking at the B, B with the bubbles. Color-wise, though, I mean, there is a no, slight I, difference. I see yeah. is more opaque. B is very clear. Yes, I see C is being a little C. more. Oh, that's right. Yellow, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. So, so C's got that tinge on mm -hmm. it, and and B's mm -hmm. got more of the shimmy, um, a, 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 a clear color. Clear. You've got a little more of a of an not an amber, but a type of an amber tinge on C. Yeah. As opposed to B having more of a of a lighter fruity or maybe even a little bit of a green yellow color mm -hmm. whereas you've got a little amber color all right so now i want you to go ahead and pick up which one are you guys going to do first let's start with c sure. see all right yeah we like to start with the the bad Backwards. guys first right <laughs> all right so let's go with c and you're going to put your nose in there and smell it what do you smell fruity 
peaches, like a peachy type smell. Sweet. I'm smelling apple pear. Apple pear, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely. not smelling pure pear and I'm not smelling pure apple, but definitely apple. Mm -hmm. Maybe even pear. I don't know. Apple leaves. Very too, apple. Too, though. Yeah. Yeah. Green apple. Banana. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't quite get that one. <laughs> Actually, I taste banana. <laughs> You had to mention banana right when I was sticking it in my mouth, right? Okay. <laughs> Actually, when I taste a lot of apple. <laughs> you do? You taste. Yeah, a lot of apple taste too. It's almost some sparkling apple cider. Mm -hmm. Man, there's a lot of pear in there. For us, it might be apple because we have like, we're all in Florida right now and we have about 30 different types of apples here and maybe oh, yeah. one type of pear. So, I'm a huge pear person, so. Pears are good for asthma. That's why I am. All right, do you like it? It's not bad. It's not bad, it's good. What it's are you thinking sweet. of? Um, it's very sweet. Yeah, what are you thinking of the aftertaste on this one? Lingers a little bit. Is it smooth or is it no? Okay. I don't feel like it is. Patty, you're you're not gonna say nothing till you take the taste the first one, are you? <laughs> <laughs>